Alrighty, if you have your Bibles, let's begin tonight. We've got a lot of stuff to cover here tonight. Luke chapter 11, verses 11 through 13. Uh, of course, we've been talking about uh, just really understanding the Holy Spirit, understanding the guidance that He provides, learning how to yield to the Holy Spirit, getting you to a point where you can understand that you are not alone, you are not by yourself, and even when there's not a, another human being around, you have the promise of the Holy Spirit that he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So that's something that you can, it's a guarantee. He will never leave you nor forsake you. So anytime you feel like you're alone, I want you to remember you have the Holy Spirit. Now, this is going to be interesting because, you know, I feel like in some, in some cases when I'm teaching on the Holy Spirit, uh, I can't assume that everybody knows this. So I've got to teach it as if you don't know it. And in fact, I, I've gotten some notes from some people that said, you know, uh, from our e-church said, I never heard that before in my life. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a challenge sometimes as a pastor to make sure we don't kind of assume that people know stuff. And I want to make sure that we, we deal with some things. Last week we dealt with the two ministries, <clears throat> two separate men, different ministries of the Holy Spirit and uh, showed you the baptism of the Holy Spirit and uh, and being saved, that those were two different experiences. So I want to pick up with that and uh, Luke chapter 11, continue the series. We, we kind of ended up talking about speaking in tongues. And I want to reiterate that again because when you talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it appears that it keeps coming up with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And I mean, preachers avoid that like a plague. And yet it's all, it's all over the New Testament. Paul said, I speak in tongues more than you all. So what, what, what are we going to do when the apostle of grace says that, that he speaks in tongues? Well, speaking in tongues, one of the things that I appreciate it, it bypasses the unbelief that is in your brain. And it allows you to talk directly to God. It is powerful but it's only for this life. So if you don't use, this is a grace gift. Speaking in tongues is a grace gift. If you don't take advantage of speaking in tongues while you are alive on this physical world, you won't need it when, when, when you leave these bodies. It is a grace gift. It allows you to pray about things you don't know about. Uh, uh, eight, Romans chapter 8 talks about the, the infirmities or the weaknesses of the flesh. In fact, let's pick up with that. Romans chapter 8. I, I know we, I said Luke. We'll get that in a minute. Go to Romans chapter 8, verse 26. <clears throat> um, there's just so many wonderful benefits in the area of speaking in tongues, but very rarely taught. In the book of Romans 8, 26, it says, Likewise, the, the Spirit, referring to the Holy Spirit, also helpeth our infirmities question how does the Holy Spirit help our infirmities that word infirmities is defined as weaknesses of the flesh so you know the Holy Spirit helps the weaknesses of the flesh so what specific weakness of the flesh is he referring to here he says for we know not what we should pray for as we ought so he says you get in a situation and maybe you're grieved in your spirit but you don't know what's going on so how can you pray for something when you don't know that it's going on so your prayer in English is limited because you can only pray about in English what you know about. But what if, what if something's going on and the only way you know is that the Holy Spirit begins to tap you and say, listen, start praying in, in tongues. And you don't even know what's going on. And you don't even know, you know what to pray. Well, that's a weakness. That's a weakness. And I certainly appreciate the fact that I don't have to know or can't have comprehension of what's actually going on what makes it so powerful is that the Holy Spirit, who knows everything and is everywhere, gives me an unction to pray. And by praying in tongues, I eliminate that weakness to be, able, to be able to pray about something I don't know about when I pray in tongues. That's awesome to me. It's like, I got to have it. And so he says, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit the Holy Spirit himself maketh intercession. Intercession is the prayers that we offer for others. Makes intercession uh, for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. I think one translation says inarticulate speech. 
So the Holy Spirit produces praying in tongues and also produces another type of prayer called the prayer of groanings. It's, you know, I can, I can get on my knees and say, Father, bless us to this, and Lord, bless that situation, and Lord, help me with that situation, and Lord, do that. I'm limited. I can, I'm only praying about what I know about or what I'm aware of. But what happens if you've got a relative or a child or a spouse that may be in a situation at that time you know nothing about it, and you begin to pray in tongues, and it takes care of that situation? I mean, that's a powerful, powerful gift. It's a grace gift. It's not anything you did to deserve it. You don't have to work for it. You receive it. And when you receive it, you are walking with a powerful weapon, praying in the Holy Spirit. And I think sometimes Christians take it advantage, take, take, uh, 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 take it for granted, and don't really, you know, realize what a wonderful grace gift that we have, and God wants you to have it. In fact, I want to prove to you in Luke chapter 11, go there. He wants you to have it more than you want to. He has a strong desire for you to receive this grace gift. Now, as I said before, uh, you talk directly to God. Let me let me go over this one more time. Uh, you're talking when you he that speaks in tongues, he speaketh unto God and not unto man. There's a difference between me praying in tongues and I'm speaking to God and me prophesying with the gift of tongues. The gift of tongues is when I speak in tongues and right behind it, I give a interpretation that you can comprehend. So I may speak in tongues, you don't understand that, but then following it, I give you an understanding of what I just said in tongues. That's a gift of tongues. And so if I'm saying something to you, uh, uh, or if I'm saying something to the congregation in tongues, but I fail to give an interpretation of what I said, now we got a problem because I'm speaking to you in tongues. I'm literally prophesying to you, but how can it benefit you if I'm prophesying to you in tongues and you don't understand what I said? So that requires interpretation to follow it. Totally different than when I speak in tongues in prayer, talking to God. There is no interpretation required. However, you can pray to God to give you the interpretation of what you, what you prayed for. So these are the things that we're going to look at things we need to listen to you need to listen to teachings like this over and over again so you can get a hold of it, it, it it's a game changer it, it's a game changer in the Christian life and I guarantee you, you you take note of those Christians who are taking advantage of this grace gift of talking and, and speaking in tongues and you look at the average Christian who says that's foolishness and I'll show you a scripture on that tonight that you know spiritual things are foolishness to the natural mind then there is going to be a difference in your life. Those who can receive that grace gift and they pray in tongues and, and understand what's going on versus those who says, I don't want to fool with it. Hey, I'm still going to heaven. That's all I want. Well, I don't want to just go to heaven. I want to have some heaven on earth. Amen. amen. Is there anything wrong with a look? The Bible talks about days of heaven on the earth. Amen. I don't, I don't want to just go to heaven. I, I want to... I wanna, I mean, you know, I want to go from glory to glory, praise God. I don't want to go from hell to heaven. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, so it's, it's powerful. It's, it's, it's not, a, I don't believe a heaven and hell issue, but you know, it, it's only going to be for this life. It's only for this life. Now look at Luke chapter 11, 11 through 13. God wants to ha wants, wants you to have it even more than you want it. And I can tell here in this scripture, look what he says in verse 11. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? So if you're a father and your son asks you for bread, he's using this illustration. Are you going to turn around as a father and give him a stone instead of giving him bread? Or he says, if he asks a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? And then he goes in verse 12 and he says, or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? Not a good father. Okay. Verse, uh, next word. If, if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. Unsaved fathers know how to give good gifts to their children. He says, how much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? He wants you to have it even more than you want to have it. And 
And that's, a, you know, somebody says, well, how do you first, you first or you go and you ask him for it. I remember doing that. Father, give me the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. He didn't give me a serpent. He didn't give me a stone. He gave me what I asked for. That Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the evidence of speaking in tongues. Now, let's examine some things here tonight. Uh, some people teach that you can't have any sin in your life. Or God won't fill you with the Holy Spirit. How many of you heard that before? I heard it. I heard it. You know, tear for the Holy Ghost. And if you didn't get it, you need to you need to get cleansed and and they'll slap some oil on you and push it back down on. I want you to listen to me carefully. So yeah, you know, some people teach that. Uh, you can't have sin in your life, or God won't fill you with the Holy Spirit. They think that God won't fill you with the Holy Spirit. They think that God won't fill a dirty vessel listen to me carefully now God doesn't have any other kind of vessel to fill did y'all hear what I just said <laughs> I, that didn't dawn on me back then but it's like the one who was telling me I was a dirty vessel is you too <laughs> you too there, there's no other kind of vessel to fill if you are perfect without the Holy Spirit, uh, then you wouldn't need the Holy Spirit, would you? If you had it all together without the Holy Spirit, then you wouldn't need it. Now, I know that's shocking to some sanctimonious people. They still, I don't know what it is. It, it seems almost like insanity for you to think that somehow you have reached perfection because you keep three out of ten of the Ten Commandments. And you have all of these other issues that nobody knows about but you and God. <laughs> the Holy Spirit only has one kind of vessel to fill. And those are dirty vessels. And I thank God that he's filling dirty vessels. Because he's the Ajax in our lives. He's the tide in our life. Amen. And, and, and we need him. And. We need him more today than we've ever needed him. You're talking about living a spirit-led life. We need that more today than ever before. And I guess my, my, my thing is like, man, how do I convince people that this is not a fable? That this is not demonic? That this is, you know, it's unusual because you just hadn't heard it enough. And men in the past had to decide based on their denominational affiliation whether or not they wanted to go that far enough. I mean, I was a Methodist, and then I became a Baptist, and then I was in the... I, I went from one extreme to the other extreme, where everything was the Holy Ghost. I mean, if I did, did that, they said, that's the Holy Ghost. Mm, what's that? That's the Holy, Holy Ghost. And it's like, you miss the entire point. That's not it. The Holy Spirit has been misunderstood and has been defined as being a jerk, a jiggle, or a cartwheel. And you miss the entire purpose of the Holy Spirit. So let me start off by, by saying this. Let me give you three purposes of speaking in tongues and then show you how that relates with the Holy Spirit in your life. Number one, the first purpose of tongues is to build up your faith. The first purpose of tongue is to build up in your faith. The book of Jude talks about praying in the Holy Ghost building up your most holy faith so I mean by praying in tongues that'll build your faith up we'll talk more about that later second purpose for tongues it draws out the power each of you are full of ability you're full of, of Holy Ghost power full of Holy Ghost ability there are abilities in you that have not yet been tapped glory be to God the Bible talks about um uh, that the heart is like a, a deep well, but a man of wisdom knows how to draw it out. Glory be to God. I'm telling you, there's untapped power in this room. Amen. And then, you know, uh, the third purpose of tongues, it draws out knowledge that is in your spirit. The third purpose of tongues is it draws out knowledge that is in your spirit. In other words, be careful about going around saying you don't know. You who are spirit filled, you have wisdom in your spirit. It's not obvious to your mind, 
but you have it and the Holy Spirit is praying in tongues is like that bucket that deeps that that dips deep inside of you and pulls knowledge and wisdom out uh, revelation is so closely associated with the purpose of the Holy Spirit in our lives and that's what we're gonna kind of go tonight tonight you're gonna walk out of here knowing how to be smarter Amen. And, and you may not know the answer at the moment but you know where the answer resides Amen. and then you know how to go and get it I can't tell you the number of times I've had to just kind of step away and just you know I was gonna make a decision out of my head and out of my experience and the Holy Spirit was like, mm, yield, yield, let me go down first. And I would go and just pray in tongues and just pray in tongues and just pray in tongues until I got a peace, all right? And then step back into the situation and all of a sudden the answer was like, like it had always been there. Now I like to tell God this, I said, I, I know I ain't that smart, but I know I got somebody smart that moved on the inside of me and can help me with it. So you, you clearly have the advantage over the world, number one, and over Christian people who won't yield or allow the grace gift of the Holy Spirit with tongues to be a part of their of, of their life and of their living. Now, there are crazy stuff that's going on in the world, but you won't be a part of that crazy. A thousand shall fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand, but it will not come near you. Amen. You will be a spectator only and not a participator. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. So let's look at Acts chapter 2 and 4. Oh, my goodness. Acts chapter 2 and verse 4. I told myself I am going to, I'm not going to get excited and just leave. I'm going I'm to impart tonight as far as I can. Acts chapter 2 and 4. Now watch this. This is, this is, I want you to see this. Let's, let's, let's look at this in the King James and then the NLT. He says, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost in the book of Acts. And they began to speak with other tongues. So you can see that when a person was filled with the Holy Spirit, the evidence of that was speaking in tongues. Filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them the utterance. The Holy Spirit gives, it, it supplies the utterance or it's not you supplying the utterance because you may not know the language up here. But it's the Holy Spirit supplying the utterance because he has knowledge of that language down here. Does that make sense? I'm, I'm going to show you just scripture. So I want you to see the Holy Spirit filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Now look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. Go there. 1 Corinthians 2, 14. All right. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. The natural um, carnal man. The word carnal means of the five senses me yeah. so the natural man or the carnal man and this there's a little difference the natural man but then the carnal man of the five senses the natural man won't receive the things of the spirit the carnal man won't receive it it won't receive it because it can't see it it can't hear it it can't taste it it can't touch it for they are foolishness unto him so if I try to just appeal to your natural man concerning spiritual things, there's, a, there's, a, there's going to be a conflict. Neither can he know them. Why? Because they're not going to be discerned through his senses. They're going to be what? Spiritually discerned. So I can't tell you the number of people I've ministered to to receive the Holy Spirit evidence speaking in tongues. And the ones who didn't just receive it right away, they were trying to... Uh, figure this out through their natural man and their senses and their mind and they do they, they, they wouldn't just receive it by faith and, and, and it's spiritually discerned. Now look at this scripture. Go to first, uh, 1 Corinthians 14 13 1 Corinthians 14 and 13 
13. This may be where I want to do the whole thing. Yeah, go to verse 1. 1 Corinthians 14, 1. 14, 1, and I'll read all the way down. Follow after charity or love and desire spiritual gifts. Now, let me say this. A Christian that does not give birth to the fruit of love must examine what his root is. Why? What's the uh, 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 yeah. Well, I'm a Christian, and there is no fruit of love. We, Houston, Houston, we got a problem. That's the hallmark of a Christian. That we're constantly developing in that. Follow after charity, love. Number one. So that's number one. Number two, desire spiritual gifts. There are spiritual gifts that have been made available for each of us so that we can use them to be a blessing for everybody else. The gifts are not for us, they're for somebody else, all right? But rather, he said, follow up to desire spiritual gift, but rather that you may prophesy. A word of prophecy. Now, in the old covenant, the pro prophecy had a different meaning. I mean, there was, there was, prophecy was used to guide people. In the new covenant, the Holy Spirit is your guide. In the New Covenant, prophecy is used uh, for exhortation, for confirmation. Uh, it, it's, it's not, you don't need prophecy to do what it did in the Old Testament because you have the Holy Spirit to lead and to guide you. Okay? Now, in verse 2, for he that speaketh, so he's talking about prophesying, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, Speaketh not unto men, but unto God. So he's talking about he that speaketh in tongues, right? It's not a tongue that you know. It's an unknown tongue. You speak not unto uh, you speak not unto men, but God. For no man understandeth him. Howbeit in the spirit, in the spirit he speaks what? In the spirit he speaks mysteries. Now let's look at verse two in the Amplified Bible. Verse two in the Amplified Bible. Man, I remember when I first got saved, I got so turned on to this. I thought, man, this is just superhero stuff right here, man. <laughs> Are you tired of going through the motions and...